Peterson here with you again. I'm going to go through a demo of how to establish a color hold. Um, a color hold is where a part of a drawing will that's inked will appear as a color um, instead of just flat black. So on this piece that I did a color demonstration on uh, before, I'm going to show you how to take the spots on the on the ladybug and make those into color holds so that this particular spot right here where the highlight on the shell kind of goes through that spot but doesn't appear to affect the spot, uh, that can be handled. Now I could do that with some other uh, kind of Photoshop tricks and techniques but I'm also going to want to make those lines up here in the corner color holds so that they're not quite so stark against the light blue background but some other variation of a, of a blue so that you can still see them but they're subtle. Um, so because I'm going to be doing that, I figured I'd do this, the color holds on the, on the ladybug spots as well. So the first thing I need to do is go back to my inks layer, which is on top, and set to multiply. I need to go back and set that to normal. Um, I have this problematic little white spot I should have taken care of. It's erased away in the original inks. If I, if I turn off all the other layers, you can see that it goes to transparent uh, right there. I'm, I'm just going to fill that in just so that it's not as confusing. There we go. All right. So my ink layer is now set to normal instead of to multiply. I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to call it master hold. Um, it's going to be the master of all the lines uh, to be used as a hold that I can go back to if something goes wrong. So I'm going to call that layer master hold. And then I'm going to go to select color range. And then this allows me with the eyedropper to eyedropper up a color. I'm going to eyedropper up the white. And then there's a fuzziness uh, slider here with how close to white does it have to be? Can it can it be a little bit off white and still be selected? Um, I tend to find just under 150 is right for for my ink and my scans. I'm going to set it to 148. Um, this might vary for you and how the what the levels on your piece are adjusted to or that kind of thing. So this might take a little bit of playing around with, but. 148 is what works for me. I'll select OK, and now I have everything that's that white selected. On my keyboard, I'm going to hit Delete. Now if I turn off all the other layers, you'll see that I just have the black ink work on transparency. Now because the very edges around my inks, because I scan in grayscale, I don't tend to like hard bitmapped black white scans. I like a little bit of fuzziness. Uh, because those are appearing as grays and not blacks, I need to turn the contrast. I need to first unselect everything. So then there we go. And then go into brightness contrast. And I turn the contrast all the way down. And then I tend to turn the brightness all the way up. And this is so that when I have the ink layer on, I can see the difference between my master hold and my inks. I'm immediately going to make another layer of this. I'm going to duplicate the master hold layer. And I'm going to call this uh, spots and ticks for the spots and the ticks. Now, if I had a more complex drawing where there was going to be lots of things that got color held, I'd probably make different layers for the different things, the different things that are being held. I'm going to turn off the master hold layer so that as I go through and delete parts that I don't want to be held on spots and ticks, like the border, like the head of the ladybug, I'm seeing the inks underneath. So the idea here is I'm, I'm mapping out by elimination everything I don't want to be a hold. Now I can do that really quickly by just selecting massive areas and deleting things away. Big fat hurry. Or I can get in there with the, with the eraser tool, hard edged eraser, and start deleting. Okay. 
Um, sometimes the line work connects a little bit, so you can't always use like the magic lasso or the uh, the magic wand. You can see that I've got this weird little stray line that then connects everything. It's easier just to go in with the hard edged eraser and just decide that right there is where that technically ends. And someplace here, like where my line work touches, I can just kind of approximate what the outer ink line would look like. And then clean up everything else around it. I found that color holds were really important with my work um, because of all the cross hatching and stippling and um, things like that, that that when I tried to put color behind them um, it, it didn't work. Uh, the, the black line work would, ended up being too hard, too harsh too dark of a color patch, and then if I made the color behind it the right lightness, or the, the right darkness to match the, the cross hatching, the, the whole image became too dark and not subtle like what I had originally envisioned. So if I was able to give the line work a little bit of subtlety, that made all the difference in the world. Uh, it also helps with little details like this, things you put like on tapestries or, or patterns on bugs or, or writing in books, all of that stuff. If it's not pure black, but a color on a color helps. So now I've got the, the color holds established. If I turn off the inks layer, you can see that just floating out there are the spots and the tick marks now. And if I turn off the background layer, you can see that that's, that's really are the, all they are, those gray shapes sitting out there on uh, on transparency. So I'm going to turn everything back on except for master hold. Uh, the master hold layer was there just in case I accidentally erased part of what I wanted to keep as a hold um, but didn't realize it soon enough to be able to undo back to it. I can just reselect it all by by using my master hold layer. And I tend to keep that as a backup as I'm working as a, as a just in case. But I'll turn everything back on, go to my inks layer, Turn that on to multiply so that we get our color back. And then on the with the spots and ticks layer, this is my hold layer uh, selected, I'm going to click on this little symbol here that's like a mini checkerboard next to where it says lock. And I'm going to lock the transparency, which means that it will not allow me to paint anywhere other than where there are pixels. So I'm going to get some kind of a dark brown going and paint in the dots. And it allowed me to only paint where those dots are because I have the transparency locked. If I didn't and I painted, it would just paint right over everything. So I, I don't want that. I'm going to undo that and go back to locking the pixels in. I'm going to eyedropper up a color that's one of the darker colors here in the sky and then go probably a circle darker than that or two and then paint over the tick marks. Okay, now back to the dodge and burn tools just like I used when I was uh, uh, coloring this piece and I can give these line uh, color holds a little bit of definition and, and lighting and rendering I want so I can dodge and burn those just like I did with the colors. And that way I can go in and get the highlights on these ladybug dots to kind of match the highlights and texture that's in the rest of the piece. So I'm probably going to make these on the side go almost as dark as they originally were in the black. but I can do the subtle differences where we've got some color highlights happening. Already established by the color. And there we go. That's how you establish color holds 
and how you can manipulate and render them separately so that they sit on top. Um, I guess one more thing to note is that the layer mode is set to normal on the color hold um, because it was a duplicate of the inks and I and I set that back to normal when I when I made a duplicate of it. It was not set to multiply. That's that's an important trick. But essentially, these these holds are set to normal and they sit on top of the inks and allow you to have a color in place of the line work.